An appeal filed against the court ruling that invalidated the no-confidence motion against the Guyana government. Our top story in Caribbean Newsline for Tuesday, March 26. From the CMC News Center in Bridgetown, I'm Don Paris. Good evening. Lawyers for Chartered Accountant and Attorney Christopher Ram have filed an application with the Caribbean Court of Justice seeking special leave to appeal last week's Court of Appeal decision that the no-confidence motion passed against the coalition government last December was not valid. Guyana's three-member Court of Appeal handed down its ruling last Friday in the matter in which the government challenged a high court ruling in January that had validated the motion. The attorneys who have filed the motion on behalf of Ram, Kamal Ramkaran and Devindra Kisun are asking the CCJ to hear the application urgently and give a ruling within seven days to prevent the violation of the constitution and a threat to democracy. Ram argues that the Court of Appeal erred in its ruling that an absolute majority of 34 votes were needed to pass the motion rather than the simple majority of 33 that had been obtained when the 65-member National Assembly voted. The attorneys are also asking that the CCJ validate the December 21, 2018 passage of the motion and order President David Granger and the Guyana Elections Commission to ensure that polls are held no later than April 29th this year. Meanwhile, Attorney General Baza Williams says he remains confident of a victory for the coalition government in the appeal. He told a local radio station on Tuesday that the decision came as no surprise to the government and he said a precedent had also been set in determining a majority for a vote of no confidence in the Caribbean. Legislators in Bermuda have unanimously rejected a United Kingdom Parliamentary Committee report that recommended UK citizens be allowed to vote, gain citizenship and run for office in the British Overseas Territory. Premier David Burt moved a motion in the House of Assembly to reject the report from the House of Commons, which he says was an unwarranted and unjustified attempt at inf intervention in Bermuda's domestic affairs. In its 44-page report, the UK Parliamentary Committee made 14 recommendations that included the right to vote for UK citizens resident in Bermuda and legalization of same-sex marriage. The motion passed in Bermuda's Parliament called on the UK government to reject the report and its retrograde recommendations with respect to Bermuda and other overseas territories. Premier Burt called for a clear message to be sent to the Foreign Affairs Committee which drew up the report that the island's parliament is the place where decisions are made for the people of Bermuda. The London-based Privy Council has upheld an appeal by human rights group Jamaicans for Justice which challenged the decision of the Police Services Commission, PSC, to promote a former police officer despite allegations of his involvement in extrajudicial killings. It said on Monday that the PSC should have investigated the allegations that the killings were carried out by teams led by Senior Superintendent Delroy Hewitt before he was promoted. The ruling has no bearing on Hewitt since he is now retired, but it sets a precedent for future promotions within the Jamaica Constabulary Force. The Privy Council, which is Jamaica's highest court, said the PSC has a duty to ensure that allegations of extrajudicial killings are fully and independently investigated before accepting a recommendation that an officer be promoted. The executive director of Jamaicans for Justice told TVJ News he hopes the PSC will adhere to the Privy Council's ruling. Within the next few weeks, the court will be making further binding legal declarations on the Jamaican state to enforce the decision. And we actually will look forward to meeting with authorities to have those declarations implemented and adhered to um, when they are promulgated within the next 21 days. And so this is now the legal precedent in the country um, that in promoting officers who have serious allegations of human rights violations, it is a legal requirement to conduct an effective and impartial inquiry and to receive information from credible sources prior to promoting officers around which such serious accusations exist. And so it, it's not a recommendation or request, it's now the law. And we hope that it will be adhered to for all, all matters similar to this moving forward. Staying in Jamaica, the Opposition People's National Party, PNP, is charging that the issues that led to Education Minister Ro Reed being forced to resign last week 
go further than what have been revealed to the public so far. Prime Minister Andrew Holness last Wednesday asked for Reeves' resignation as investigations began into allegations of nepotism, cronyism, and outright corruption in his ministry. There have been several questions surrounding Reeves' relationship with the Caribbean Maritime University, the CMU, and the opposition spokesman on education, Ronald Twaits, who served as education minister under the former PNP administration, is urging Holness to provide the nation with more information about just how deep the scandal runs. We get more in this TVJ News report. But the opposition spokesman on education, Ronald Thwaites, says his party has more information than is already in the public domain. However... We, however, are not an investigative force. And therefore, we rely upon the investigations that are underway. We are very concerned that we must put out these questions so that answers are solicited. Right and fear that if we did not do that, some might be submerged. If you asked if we have more information uh, or have information to back up these uh, questions that are asked, the answer would be yes. Mr. Thwaites said they only need more proof. In the Senate, the questions range from whether or not the CMU funded a birthday party for the former education minister on a yacht in the Kingston Harbor to if resources from the university were used to build a home for a staff member and also if it was employing politically connected persons. The CMU in a release on Sunday did not deny employing politically connected persons. Instead, it said it's an equal opportunity employer. There were also concerns over whether the former minister was properly advised. According to Mr. Thwaites, the National Council on Education, which was created by law to advise the education minister, has not been in operation since 2018. Meantime, Carl Samuda has been assigned to the Ministry of Education, Youth and Information to fill the vacancy left by Reed's forced resignation. But a statement from the office of the Prime Minister said that Holness is conducting an administrative review of the ministry and will maintain oversight of the portfolio while that review is underway. And as a result of Samuda's reassignment, Senator Purnell Charles Jr. is now Minister Without Portfolio in the Ministry of Economic Growth and Job Creation. He was previously State Minister in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Affairs and Foreign Trade. The Bahamas government has committed to introducing free university education later this year. Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis addressed the issue on Monday night in an address to the nation in which he outlined an aggressive policy aimed at restructuring the country's education system. He said education remains at the core of the Bahamas' economic and social development and his government's mission is to ensure that everyone has access to the educational opportunities they need to succeed in life and to become responsible citizens. And he insisted that reform of the educational system must impact every stage of learning from preschool to university and other education and training agencies. We have to think big and to act boldly to secure our future. Beginning this September, qualifying students will be able to attend the University of the Bahamas tuition free. We will make more announcements on this at a later date. We are committed to expanding access to technical and vocational skill training for many more Bahamians. Minis added that early childhood education is also being enhanced with the Bahamas Early Start project. This project will impact both public and private preschools through the revision of the national preschool curriculum, the training of teachers, caregivers, and teachers' aides on effective strategies in early childhood education and through parent information and education. The Bahamian leader also addressed the issue of crime in his address and he warned criminals that they will be relentlessly tracked down and brought to justice. He said the war on crime will be expanded through several initiatives, including the installation of 507 more closed circuit television cameras in the capital and the rollout of a drone program. We are building a national drone program that will aid in the detection and prevention of crime 
that will be operational in New Providence this year. This program will also assist with border control and in other areas of national security. We are also reviewing other crime fighting technologies such as body cams and dash cams for law enforcement officers. Still to come, the Caribbean Newsline news that the drought in the Caribbean could be prolonged. The details after the break. Non-stop turn and twist. What up, it's your boy French Montana. It's me, Smokey Robinson. It's your boy David Dove. Hi, I'm LMA. This is Muncha Banton, and I'll be performing live with the Shine Look Band in St. Kitts Music Festival. Don't miss the 23rd annual St. Kitts Music Festival, June 26th to June 30th, 2019. Featuring Muncha Banton, Smokey Robinson, Popcorn, and LMA. Also, Davido, French Montana, Fimba, Edwin Yearwood, and Crossfire, Coco T, Skinny Fab. Fabulous, Shal Marshall, Charlie Black, Farmer Nappy, Nadia Batson, Infamous, New Vibes Band, and many, many more. It will be epic. It will be mind-blowing. It will be jaw-dropping. It will be awesome. The Think It's Music Festival, an experience like no other. For more information and to buy tickets, log on to www.thinkitsmusicfestival.com. The Caribbean Institute for Meteorology and Hydrology says weak El Nino conditions could prolong the drought in the Caribbean. El Nino is associated with a band of warm ocean water that develops in the central and east central equatorial Pacific. In its latest publication of the Caribbean Climate Outlook, the CIMH says heat waves will start occurring in May. It explained that region-wide extreme heat is unlikely the frequency of wet days and wet spells should be initially low, but will increase in these months. The CIMH said that for the period December 2018 to February this year, shorter-term drought developed across many parts of the Caribbean, while the Bahamas, Cayman, and western parts of Cuba have been wetter than usual. It said that long-term drought persisted in parts of Hispaniola and in Tobago, depleting water resources faster this dry season than usual. For the period up to June, the CIMH predicts that severe or worse drought will develop in Antigua, Aruba, Barbados, Belize, Curaçao, North Guyana, parts of French Guiana, South Hispaniola, and the Windward Islands, except Grenada on the shorter term, and in Southern Hispaniola and Tobago in the long term. Opposition lawmakers in Belize have dismissed this year's budget presented by Prime Minister Dean Barrow earlier this month, saying the $1.25 billion fiscal package was designed to mask the common corrupt intent of the current administration. Opposition leader John Bersinho, who led off the budget debate, charged that government's policy was to hustle kickbacks. We get more in this report from Channel 5 Belize. As it is presented, the budget for the upcoming fiscal calendar emphasizes continued infrastructure development. That financial plan is chided as one which focuses more on physical structures, including roads, bridges, and buildings, than it does on human development and addressing the ever-increasing cost of living. Responding to the opposition's criticism of the annual budget is Belmopan era representative John Saldiver, whose place in cabinet is Minister of National Security. You don't go questioning our figures, uh, Minister, uh, the, the leader of the opposition, and 
took to say about inflation that this they go up and that they go up and the other they go up. I, I don't know if he understands how you arrive at your inflation figure, but inflation is an average of prices. And average means that some went up and others went down. In speaking to the present state of the economy, Brishenia continued by stating that the financial affairs of the country remain stagnant, particularly where the primary sector is concerned. Now the primary sector, the mainstay of our mixed economic model, only accounts for 10% of our national income. Que desgracia! The sad truth is that the economy is not really growing. And these so-called investments in infrastructure, which are, which are all government-driven, are no more than special vehicles for UDP cronies to have access to taxpayers' monies for kickbacks. That juxtaposition was met with harsh scrutiny and criticism by the People's United Party. However, it was bolstered by Saldivar, who proceeded to use the state of the oil industry as the example by which things are strikingly different. And ahead in sport, an apology coming for former West Indies head coach Phil Simmons. We'll tell you from who and why when we return. Stay with us. At the recently held Jamaica Music Industry Association Awards, the members of iconic reggae group I3, Judy Mawat, Marcia Griffiths, and Rita Marley were awarded the Icon Award. During the ceremony, Coffee's Toast was named Song of the Year, and Naomi Cohen was named Breakthrough Artist of the Year. You never put up a fight, no. Paradise, no. Just know me like we knew we never had to say your word, not your show. Silence. But you can't blame me for trying. You know I'll be lying, saying, Go the way. Girl, you're giving me signs, and you tell me you don't want me. Can you make up your mind? Pretty girl, you're taking your time. Why you do me like this? You know me loving you. Check it, check it, check it. Pull up, pull up, pull up. Yo, what up, Neff, Neff? See, this is Hall of Me's eyes. Same goes our party face. Okay guys, so time is up. Now time to add our shrimp here. West Indies President Ricky Skerritt says he will apologize to former head coach Phil Simmons for his dismissal more than two years ago. Skerritt plans to reach out to the Trinidadian who was abruptly sacked in September 2016, six months after overseeing the capture of the 2020 World Cup title in India for what CWI termed differences in approach and in cultural and strategic approach. Just days before the election in which Skerritt was elected to the top CWI post, then President Dave Cameron went on record as saying it had been a bad decision to hire Simmons in the first place. But in an exclusive interview with CMC Sports on Tuesday, Skerritt said he believes his predecessor erred when he said that hiring Simmons was a mistake coach he's a world-class coach I, I I think the 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 the, the my predecessor made an unfortunate statement when he said it was a miss hiring Phil Simmons I, I was involved in the, the the interview panel that recruited Phil Simmons from a long list of competitors and Phil Simmons was the best candidate and he proved himself in terms of his results on the field to have been a very competent coach. And if, if it's one thing that I am going to do as president of Cricket West Indies is to apologize to, to Phil Simmons for having been referred to as a mistake. Cricket West Indies did not make a mistake when Phil Simmons was recruited. 
On the issue of the current legal role between Cricket West Indies and Simmons, in which the former coach is seeking damaging, damages amounting to 400,000 US dollars, Scarrett confirmed that the matter is expected to be settled by Tuesday. What I can tell you is that within minutes of becoming president, literally within minutes, because as soon as the annual general meeting ended, I was able to have a quick uh, brief from the chief financial officer and the chief operations officer on the matter. And I am confident that that matter will be sorted out very, very quickly if it hasn't actually been sorted out already today. I will find out tomorrow morning, and as soon as the matter is settled, Cricket West Indies will put out a statement accordingly. Meantime, West Indies Players Association President and Chief Executive Wavell Hines is anticipating a close working relationship with the newly elected CWI President. In congratulating Skerritt on landing the top job, Hines pointed out that his task as head of WIPA was to ensure the continued improvement of the players' well-being and as such, he was hoping to work hand-in-hand hand with the, his, his CWI counterpart to achieve that goal. Hines said, quote, WIPA is here to try to make sure that what we do from a player's perspective is aligned to the objectives of Cricket West Indies in trying to be the best team in the world. I would imagine that, without even asking, we are pretty much in agreement with the democratic process and we are looking forward to working with the persons who are there, but we also are respectful of the fact that contributions have been made by former President Cameron and Vice President Nansen, and so I want to tell them thanks and wish them the best in their future endeavors." End quote. Hines, who was among those on hand to ensure a fair process during the election on Sunday, also reaffirmed his commitment of continued dialogue with the CWI leadership for the players' inclusion in the effort to push West Indies cricket forward. Staying with cricket, explosive West Indies women's all-rounder Deandra Dotton again proved su superb as Barbados easily retained their regional Super 50 title by brushing aside arch-rivals Trinidad and Tobago by 28 runs in their final round match on a Monday. Both sides entered the contest at Enmore on the backs of four straight wins, but it was Barbados who proved superior, chalking up 242 for seven off their 50 overs and then restricting TNT to 214 all out in the 48th over. After Barbados were sent in, Dotton stroked 73 off 43 deliveries to lead a trio of half-century makers as Kaisia Knight top scored with 77, while her twin Kaishana Knight chipped in with 56. In reply, Felicia Walters and Rachel Vincent provided a 50-run opening stand for TNT, but it consumed 97 deliveries and placed immense pressure on the innings. Dotton produced a telling burst with her medium pace to claim 6 for 38, cutting through the middle and lower order as TNT crashed from 182 for 4 in the 42nd over, losing their last six wickets for just 30 runs. At the National Stadium, Jamaica chased down a paltry 91 to beat Leeward Islands by eight wickets, with Windy's captain Stephanie Taylor taking four for nine with her offspin and international teammate Shadeen Nation then stroking an unbeaten 53. At Border, host Guyana beat Windward Islands by 52 runs after comfortably defending 132 with off-spinners Shanita Grimmond and Fafiana Millington doing the damage. West Indies superstar Chris Gale belted a man of the match half century to help fire King's 11 Punjab to a 14-run win over Jofra Archer's Rajasthan Royals in the Indian Premier League on Monday. Playing at the Sawai Man Singh Stadium, Kings 11 powered their way to 184 for four of their 20 overs, with the veteran left-hander striking 79 of 47 deliveries. Gale, lashing eight fours and four sixes, appeared set for a 22nd T20 hundred when he fell in the 16th over holding out to mid-wicket off England seamer Ben Stokes, who had figures of 2 for 48. Left-hander Nicholas Puran, on his IPL debut, struck 12 of 14 balls before also falling to Stokes off the first ball of the final over. In reply, England opener Joss Butler smashed 69 of 43 balls, but Royals came up short after a lower order clump. They were 148 for two in the 17th over, but lost seven wickets for 16 runs in the space of 16 deliveries, and they lost their way dramatically. 
Switching sports, Guyana's senior men's table tennis team will not be going to the Pan Am Games. That's because they lost to the Dominican Republic in the qualifiers on Monday. Newsroom's Akeem Green tells us more. Close, but yet so far for Guyana men in the quest for a trip to Lima, Peru for the Pan Am Games. Their exit came at the hands of a powerful Don Republic contingent who dominated a knuckle clash to win 3-0. Christopher Franklin and Shamar Brayton prayed for the doubles, but lost 8-11, 5-11, and 8-11 to Samuel Galvels and Emil Santos. Joel Allen lost his singles match to Wu Jai, 5-11, 6-11, and 2-11. Brayton was the last hope, and certainly he tried his best. He was the only player to win a set in his clash against Santos. He should have won the first one, but going between a set point only to have Santos bring it to juice. It ended 12-14. The talented Southpaw then squared his set with a 11-6 win, but he seemed to lose his finesse and failed in the play, as Santos dominated to close out 7-11 and 4-11. Franklin and Britain spoke to news from Sport and gave their overview of how the matches went. Dominican has not been easy. No, those guys are actually um, playing at a pretty high level. Um, you can see they're match ready, coming from uh, playing a lot of tournaments around Europe and stuff like that. But we definitely gave the best that we could. You know, um, I think more than anything else, it was rusty match wise for us. But uh, it was not we weren't ready, but you know, it was just wasn't coming together how we wanted to. But we still gave our best. And that's the sport. We'll be right back. Non-stop turn and twist. What up, what up? It's your boy, French Montana. It's me, Smokey Robinson. It's your boy, David Dove. Hi, I'm Elle This is Bucci Banton, and I'll be performing live with the Shine Band in St. Kitts Music Festival. Don't miss the 23rd annual St. Kitts Music Festival, June 26th to June 30th, 2019. Featuring Bucci Banton, Smokey Robinson, Popcorn, and Elle May. Also, Davido, French Montana, Fimba, Edwin Ear, Wood and Crossfire, Coco T, Skinny Fabulous, Shal Marshall, Charlie Black, Farmer Nappy, Nadia Batson, Infamous, New Vibes Band, and many, many more. It will be epic. It will be mind-blowing. It will be jaw-dropping. It will be awesome. The Sinkett Music Festival, an experience like no other. For more information and to buy tickets, log on to www.sinkettsmusicfestival.com. Again, the major developments of this day, an appeal filed against the court ruling that invalidated the no-confidence motion against the Guyana government. And in sport, new West Indies cricket president Ricky Skerritt says he will apologize to former head coach Phil Simmons for his dismissal more than two years ago. And that's Caribbean Newsline for news and sport around the clock. Subscribe to CanonNews.com and for more of our programming, log on to caravision.tv and check out our YouTube channel. We'll be back here again tomorrow. But from all of us at CMC News, thank you for watching and good night. Thank you.